Welding, similarly to thermal cutting, uses very high temperature to either add molten metal or remove the parts themselves. The heat generated causes an important temperature gradient in and around the weld or cut area, which significantly affect the microstructure and mechanical properties of the area between the weld or cut area and the parent metal. These changes in material property are usually as a result of welding or high heat cutting. Generally, the metallurgy of welded joint can be divided into two main zones, the fusion zone and the heat affected zone. The formation of the heat affected zone has a considerable effect on the quality of the final product. For this reason, it is good to understand the different aspect of it. This video will discuss on the causes, effect and control of heat affected zone in welding and cutting. Welcome to James Sword Research Channel. Endeavor to watch till the end for better understanding, like and share the video, subscribe to the channel if you are new to the channel, and turn on notification for new contents. What is heat affected zone? The heat affected zone is the portion of a base metal that was not melted during welding or thermal cutting, but has undergone changes in properties. The changes is due to exposure to high temperatures. The heat affected zone is a zone outside the fusion zone of the welded joint that is affected by the welding treatment. It is considered a transition zone because it is composed with the microstructure of the base metal and their fusion zone. These changes in structure can reduce the metal strength. The heat affected zone is identifiable by a series of brightly colored bands between the cutting or welding interface and the unaffected base metal. Colors of the heat affected zone. During welding and thermal cutting, there is a series of colored bands which extend across the heat affected zone. This tint is visible and can often be recognized by a series of brightly colored bands. These different colors vary from light yellow to dark blue and are an approximate indication of the temperature reached by the metal. The table provides the band colors with respect to temperature. For light yellow, the temperature is 290 degrees Celsius. Straw yellow 340 degrees Celsius. Yellow 370 degrees Celsius. Brown 390 degrees Celsius. Purple brown 420 degrees Celsius. Dark purple 450 degrees Celsius. Blue 540 degrees Celsius. Dark blue 600 degrees Celsius. The hint colors depend on the material resistance to oxidation, chromium content, surface condition, presence of contaminants such as paint, oil, rust, and even fingerprint. While the heat tint is the most visible indicator that a material has undergone change, other chemical and metallurgical changes can occur within the heat affected zone. Microstructure of the heat affected zone. The amount of heat input during the welding or cutting process normally exceeds the melting temperature and subsequent cooling leads to microstructural change. The following parameters decides the extent of microstructural changes. They are amount of heat input, maximum temperature reached, duration of elevated temperature, cooling rate. In conventional steel, the heat affected zone can be broken down into coarse grain zone, refined grain zone, partially transformed zone, the tempered zone. Generally, the heat affected zone is divided into two regions, the partially melted zone and the true heat affected zone. The partially melted zone is the region separating the fusion zone from the true heat affected zone. Transition from 100% liquid at the fusion boundary to 100% solid in the true heat affected zone. Localized melting is normally observed at grain boundaries. The true heat affected zone is adjacent to the partially melted zone. All solid state metallurgical reactions occurs in this zone. Recrystallization, grain growth, phase transformation, formation of precipitates, formation of residual stress etc. This zone is strongly dependent on weld thermal cycle and heat flow conditions. Causes of heat affected zone. The main cause of the heat affected zone is heat. The amount of heat input during the welding or cutting process normally exceeds the melting temperature and subsequent cooling leads to microstructural changes. Size of the heat affected zone. The width of the heat affected zone depends on factors like thermal diffusivity and choice of cutting methods. Thermal diffusivity is an important factor influencing the size of the heat affected zone. 
The thermal diffusivity of a metal is the measure of how fast heat will be transmitted through its body. The level of thermal diffusivity is dependent on the material's thermal conductivity, density, specific heat, and amount of heat input. When the thermal diffusivity is high, the metal will be able to transmit heat quicker. This leads to faster cooling rate. Thus, the heat affected zone width will be small. When the thermal diffusivity is low, the heat duration will be long and the cooling rate slow. Thus, increases the width of the heat affected zone. The choice of cutting method. Every cutting method is a little different. Thus, the resulting heat affected zone also varies. For example, shearing and water jet cutting do not create a heat affected zone as they do not heat the material during cutting. Laser cutting will create a smaller heat affected zone because it has a narrow cutting curve and the heat is applied to a small area. Plasma cutting will give an intermediate heat affected zone. The cutting speeds can be manipulated to give a thin heat affected zone. Oxyacetylene cutting creates the widest heat affected zone due to high heat, slow speed and flame width. Therefore, the size of the heat affected zone in thermal cutting is influenced by the temperature during cutting and the speed of cutting operation. Effects of heat affected zone. Due to the heat experienced in the heat affected zone, major undesirable mechanical property changes occur so that they differ to that of the base metal. A metal's mechanical properties such as fatigue, resistance, distortion, and surface cracking are affected. These changes may give lower strength, susceptibility to cracking, reduced corrosion resistance, or lower toughness. For instance, stainless steel corrodes in the heat affected zone. The heat produced in the fusion area causes chromium carbides to precipitates around the grain boundaries in the heat affected zone. This reduces the chromium content below 10.5%. Thus, it losses the ability to form a passive film to protect the steel. The temperature in the heat affected zone can lead to hydrogen embrittlement. This is the diffusion of hydrogen into the metal lattice, which reduces the ductility and toughness of the metal. This can cause hydrogen cracking, even after 24 hours of the cutting process. When metals are subjected to high temperature, they can undergo oxidation. This is responsible for the brightly colored band that are characteristics of the heat affected zone. In some cases, the heat affected zone is harder and stronger than the parent metal, which can cause problems. But in aluminum, the heat affected zone is softer and weaker than the parent metals. Therefore, the heat affected zone is often an area where failure can occur. Controlling of heat affected zone. It is impossible to completely eliminate the heat affected zone. Reduction is the better option to controlling heat affected zone. Reducing and improving the microstructure of the heat affected zone, the properties of the welded joint will definitely improve. This can be achieved by heat treatment, following the welding or cutting operation. The heat treatment applied will depend upon the required properties and the intended changes required. Altering the phase of the metal evenly ensures a lesser effect regarding the surrounding metal. However, this process can be costly and time consuming and may not offer a complete solution. Whether you are cutting or welding metal, the key is speed. Shorter exposure to heat leaves a lesser heat affected zone. Mechanical finishing can help with the aesthetic side. By machining the metal, it is the most effective way to remove the entire heat affected zone. This does lead to a loss of material and reduce material yield. In conclusion, from our discussions, we are able to infer that 1. The heat affected zone is the critical zone in a welded joint. For this reason, it is necessary to control its effect. 2. The heat affected zone is an heterogeneous zone, which is divided into different subzones. 3. There are many possible metallurgical reactions in the heat affected zone. 4. The mechanical properties and microstructure of the heat affected zone depends on the heat input during welding and cutting. 5. The key to controlling the heat affected zone is the speed during welding and cutting.